was there in 2008 so i remember uh, 14 september i was partying in the night on sunday night i woke up monday morning i switched on the tv and saw my company is gone i can tell you hyandi people don't know investing <laughs> हमारे गुजरात में वी डू लाइक एट्थ की समर वेकेशन में वी लर्न ट्रेडिंग नाइन्थ में वी लर्न ट्रेडिंग सो दे वो लाइक डोंट गेट इम्प्रेस एंटीमिटेटेड बाय एनी पोर्टफोलियो यू सी ऑन यूट्यूब इंस्टाग्राम Hi everyone uh, this is Ashish Jindal and we are bringing to you the inclusive investor of podcast for the investors by the investors and today we have our guest Saurabh Girdar from Rohtak Haryana and he has immense experience in fintech in working in tech companies he has worked in companies like Lehman Brothers Nomura and currently he has he has been working with OLX Autos and also currently building a SaaS platform for lending in fintechs so welcome Saurabh to the podcast and thanks for making time really good to know that you are also from haryana and i am i am also from haryana thoda connection acha ban gaya wahan pe now uh, let's get into it uh, really keen to understand your journey learn about it uh, it seems that you have tried and tested all the platforms that exist in this finance or investment space and i think our viewers will get really benefited from all those things and those experiences uh let's start from the very beginning how did you, did it all start when did you start investing when did you start earning let's start from there first of all thanks for having me here this is a pleasure so as you said my name is saurav i was born and brought up in rohtak after that i have in multiple locations so i am an it professional uh, living in gurgaon from last 10 years now and working from last 17 years So I started with the IBM as a IT professional in 2006, and after one year of that, uh, I had privilege to work with Lehman Brothers in 2007. Somebody told me, "Yeah, Mr. Banking में बहुत पैसा है ऐसे मतलब." There was no startup back then, right? So only banks were used to pay good salary. So Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Lehman. So I switched to Lehman Brothers, and lucky enough to work there for one year, but not lucky enough to get the good bonuses they pay at the year end. So it got bankrupt after 11 months of joining. Uh, was it? Uh... at the same time as the financial crisis of 2008 yes i i was there in 2008 so i remember uh, 14 september i was partying in the night on sunday night i woke up monday morning i switched on the tv and saw my company is gone oh so somebody is calling me i was reading newspaper and everybody like panic what happened there right so it was a different journey all together different emotion all together like place you used to go on daily basis and now it's, it's no longer there and where were you were you in usa i was in mumbai right back then and how was like that experience and how, what was the reaction of you or your colleagues at that moment frankly i was quite young to understand the macroeconomics back then and i think that was the time when everybody learned all the heavy terms right subprime cdo cmo i was not aware of any of them okay i was just a programmer working there in the operation technology and suddenly this happened and it was a very restrictive environment back then because investment banking right you cannot take any data out uh, everything has to be recorded and all suddenly the world changed right i i went to office next day and it's like okay everything okay on computer now you can open nokri.com and then apply your job online uh, my boss called and say okay let's come to office we'll discuss how things gonna happen what will happen there was an uncertain time for like one and a half month but eventually uh, nomura took over and i became an employee of nomura god there i worked for like uh, three more years uh, so i spent like total four years so i had joining letter of lehman and renewing letter of nomura that's also <laughs> an experience i would say and uh, there i worked in uh, fixed income technology and then i got to know that products like fixed income products they can give you variable returns right mm-hmm. so that that's a complex thing right i was used to think if something say 8% coupon rate i'll get 8% got but then you see how institution play right in 8% you're getting getting 10% 12% 15% and you can lose money in fixed income as well got it not very frequently but especially in the right changing interest time like happening right now in this year so i got to know about that and then uh, i worked there for three more years uh, learn more about how things work so couple of my flatmates were doing uh, mba finance there got it and they were used to go for exams of cfa and cfm and all i got interested and uh, i also cleared three four the cfm exam i read cfa level 1 books and i would say thanks to all the friends i made there especially gujarati friends okay i can tell you hyandi people don't know investing <laughs> okay 
So we were used to get interns there, uh, 20, 21 years, 19 years, like second year, third year. They will come in the morning and say, hey, let's buy this stock, let's sell this stock. And like, how do you learn all this? And they were like, Hamare Gujarat mein we do like eighth ki summer vacation mein we learn trading. <laughs> Ninth mein we learn trading. So they were like so much expert back then. So I also got in the people were talking about stocks and at that point of time there was a rush, right? Anything you buy, it gives you ten percent in two months. So I also started putting money, that's how it started. And what was this time? This was uh, 2007 December, 2008 Good. January time. Good. In quest to move close to home in North India, I joined, uh, I took assignment in Fidelity. And there I was working as a developer in the order generation for portfolio managers. Got it. So it's a mutual fund company. And then I got to know the, how mutual fund operates, how they place orders in market. And I was surprised that there are so much regulations, compliance and rules. There are country rules, industry rules, company rules, fund rules. You have to pass like 100 compliance just to place one order in mutual fund. Right. And I was the one who was writing all this logic about how to place order, how to connect to exchange, how to run compliance on those. That gave me much insight about how mutual fund works, how portfolio managers think that I have to do the modeling. Got it. And then I think in 2013, June around that time, I moved to another financial company, uh, American Place Financials. It was used to be part of uh, American Express earlier, called as American Express Financial Advisors. And it got spun off in 2005 at public company listed on NYSC. Uh, they are one of the biggest uh, financial advisory firm in the US. Got it. So I worked there for like eight years. First four years, uh, I was part of their asset management division, uh, Columbia Credit Investments. They have multiple companies in US and UK, uh, mutual fund business. And there I worked on reconciliation, how when you buy a mutual fund, how the trading happens in the back end, how the NDV gets calculated. I work in the front office, middle office, back office. So four years it was a different learning experience. I learned everything around how actual NAV is getting calculated at the end of day, how custodians are placing order, how security trading is happening. And then in the last four years I worked, I took an internet transfer to their advice and wealth management office. So there I got a chance to work on asset allocation, risk assessment, new client onboarding, client and account maintenance. So it is like a, you go to any bank, right? You need to do anything. Uh, you need to fill a form. Right. So back then it all used to be manual and we were in process of converting all those forms into online flows. Okay. So you do anything in the company, you have to step by step, one single page app will be there. You need to fill on permission, digital signing, like what we all do right now. Uh, we used to do that back then. Uh, new account opening and then uh, you go to any mutual fund side right you fill in what is your age what is your income and all right, right. and based on those three questions it tell you what is your risk appetite right you should do 50 percent in equity 20 percent in fixed income and all yeah so i i wrote that program how how that comes in the front end oh, right nice. so i i know allocation at different levels so for example uh, firstly you will have at like equity fixed income order investments then even with an equity you will have at large cap, multi cap, small cap. Right. Then even in large cap, you'll have US cap, IT sector wise position. So there are different kind of modeling, which is done by such team. And based on your inputs, we generate those models and give you, okay, this is how you should invest. Got it. Now, developing that application gave me exposure how an ideal portfolio should look like. Got it. And everyone should follow that. So I, I happened to visit US twice where I saw the trading floors as well. I, I saw trading floor in uh, UK as well. I went from Namura there for a short assignment. I, my office was just next to uh, London Stock Exchange. Got it. It was a feeling seeing that okay, one of the oldest exchanges running there, scripts are running. And what was the environment like there? Is it like we see in the movies or War for Wall Street or something like that? What, what, what was it like? So I, I'll tell you one uh, story, right? So in our Boston trading floor, uh, it's on the 30th floor in every tall building. You see the good sea harbor, okay? It's a beautiful view. But I doubt anybody in that room ever sat to adore that view, to see <laughs> the ships or something. You have like eight screens in front of you. I don't think you have time to maybe bend down or just look aside on that. It's, it's like a rush. Not exactly shouting like Wolf of Wall Street. So see, there's a difference. There are, there are two types of trading floors. Generally, sell side firms, like investment banks, brokers and all, they have shouts. Go so ahead. I have seen that kind of setup as well, where there is too much noise. But when you actually go to trading just of a mutual fund company, they are on the buy side, right? Mm -hmm. They are not very aggressive. They buy like once in a month type. They do research, they do wait list trading. So that's a little peaceful. 
But yes, it's it's a different experience whether you go to fixed income, mutual fund, or any any product. It's a different experience altogether. I think any investor should actually go and visit one trading floor at least. Maybe go somewhere Mumbai NSC floor or somewhere you need to see how it happens. Got it. Sure. And what after that? So after that, uh, I was working there in 2021. I thought, okay, yeah, बहुत हो गया fintech fintech. तो कुछ और करते हैं. So I wanted to move to some mass e-commerce product or something. So I I joined Oilex. Oilex is a brand name, right? We have like uh, 30 million monthly active users. And then I got to know that they are setting up financing from scratch. Got it. So I got excited again to do things from scratch, and I again got stuck in finance only. Now working there from last two years, I think I enjoyed my journey. One of the first member to be in the finance the vertical there, starting things from scratch, and I went to Chile for uh, doing UAT and production launch and all. End to end journey, very very impressive and very satisfied with that. Got it. Really really interesting to know, and I have so many interesting things to ask you and learn from you. I'll now relate it. I'll start from the beginning, right? Coming from a maybe tier two, tier three town, Rohtak, right? Uh, yeah. Now, obviously, it's, it's really developed. Uh, we, uh, did you think of getting into fintech or finance? What were those thoughts like? And uh, when you completed your engineering, right? You got your job. What were your thoughts when you have not joined any of these companies? And thoughts when you joined this company, the first company? Frankly, I I didn't plan all of this. Right, but once I joined one of these company, I started liking it. Go right. See, uh, world is run by economics, right? So I'll tell you, uh, my father is a master in economics in 1975 batch. Although he joined a government company, so so he could not pursue economics interest. But he was used to buy shares back then. Go right. And every Diwali, when we clean up, we'll find some paper share okay. of some company which has got delisted 10 years back. <laughs> Multiple times it has happened. Go right. he buys lot of shares on hunch and it has worked for me why because his investment horizon is so long got it he'll buy and forget for 20 years right now i am trying to put everything on place okay i have installed apps on his mobile that you can see how the prices are going up and all so being from a middle class family government employee three kids i don't think we ever had that kind of money to discuss any kind of financial investments in my family right the whole salary goes into medical invest uh, medical and education they no scope for that right i think my investment journey started like only when i started putting to lehman i got into touch with the people who do trading people who are like advisors people who are mutual money mutual funds and all that that's how it all started didn't plan but i liked it i think finance is very complicated world especially when it comes to developing technology for finance see if you are on twitter if you are developing twitter facebook instagram anything right i publish a post you miss it It's not going to happen anything, right? It's, it's okay. But if your bank account get debited, somewhere it has to be credited, right? So right. system need to be very robust and secure. Right. So even developing those systems keep me intrigued. Okay, we have to be very careful about lot of things, security, transaction control, all those things. That's how I kept running. Okay, Alex, let's, let's work in this industry, and it helps in moving across as well. So there are lot of banks which I can go and apply because of my background there. Got it. Got it. Now coming to your journey when you got in touch with folks from Gujarat, in your case, uh, who were trading and all. What was that experience like? What was your first thing to do? Right, I am assuming it was opening a bank, a uh, demat account. What was that experience like? And uh, can you share what logic or framework did you use to uh, you use to start investing? So I will I tell you frankly, uh, my interest in what money back then was very naive. Okay. I only knew about absolute number. You have hundred rupees, you make one twenty. I didn't know how inflation works, how taxation works, how commission works, and I was not allowed to do trading in terms of because of being in Western Bank, right? All the restrictions are right, there. Right. So my friends were used to do it. I was sometimes doing their account, uh, sometimes doing family account somewhere, and I will do that without understanding the valuation and all. Right. I haven't read any book back then. I didn't know how how it operates. I just hear some stock. Okay, let everybody buy that. I'll open it number of times. Okay, it's going up. Let's buy that. But then I won't get time to log in again, and I may end up losing. So it's one of the mistakes I did that without understanding the whole concept. I actually even did short selling once without understanding that I have to buy buy back that stock at 3 p.m. Okay. I was in meeting from 2 to 3, and then something happened after three days. Isn't that how most of the folks 
buy or start their journey in investment yes i would say but i think now that should not happen so if you go online you see tech has provided so much resources online right there are mock trading platforms there so much education initiative so many information available i think you can you can easily learn how things work got it so now you mentioned okay how you started and made these mistakes now if you are starting today right and uh, if you have to guide someone how to start your journey how would you suggest so i i would say uh, start with basic learn how money works right learn what is inflation why do you need to invest how does company work why do company raise money right that's also important to understand how taxation works how commissions work don't don't fall into any trap right that somebody will come to you and sell a product and you just buy it got it see there are two different things investing like you do it or you do it just for sake of doing got it. if you just want everybody wants to see their money grow right right but if you don't understand what is the underlying concept somebody might come and fool you then you may end up buying wrong product of course so whether you do it yourself or do by advisor some understanding is required here. so you, you you should learn the learn the basic and i think this financial education is not much discussed topic in school colleges it should be added as a subject there in the in the higher higher education yeah and i am i am assuming that you been uh, working at this finance or fintech companies right that brought an understanding and you became more aware about these these uh, decisions now coming back to you started you made some mistakes right then what was that moment you thought ki now you have to start analyzing things more uh then what did you do and did you what kind of stock options were you just into stocks or were there more things that were going on okay so i think one of the mistake we all did right i think you would also done have you would done that buy newly policies back then <laughs> so it's like uh, from an uncle you know and he'll come to you and sell some newly policy so my it. father is a uh, lic agent Okay. So he has sold me one. Oh, your father also sold me. <laughs> so he See, sold me one. Now you can't trust anybody in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so you won't believe I I ended up buying a Yuli policy. I closed it after four years on a net loss of twenty five percent. And if you consider time value money concept, the gross loss would be like forty percent or so. So uh, don't 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 do all these things. Understand the product before you go. Uh, I I was not doing much of the stocks. I was doing mutual funds. uh i would say in last 5 to 7 years since all this startup revolution came new platform has come investing has been evolved to a next level Good. there are more products available you can do that i tell you some more mistakes i did right i will log in monday uh, i i knew how to do analysis i have read about all this technical analysis fundamental analysis i will log in one random day i read the news i buy some stocks then i for next few days i will forget about it because i won't get time see i have a full time job 9 to 9 working right and technology is never 9 to 6 right so i log in after 2 months and oh yahan to paisa chala gaya jaise matlab so now i don't do that so if you ask me now i i use wealth manager small case to actually do stock investment because i don't have trying to track on daily basis right and if somebody is doing that good job I am ready to pay two percent or one percent commission. I don't mind that. Got it. It's still better than losing ten percent, right? Right. So I do that. One one other mistake I did since uh, I think 2018 or 19, uh, RBI they have to do this P2P stuff, right? Peer right. to peer lending. Right. 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 So a lot of platforms came up where you actually go and you choose who wants to take money as a borrower, and you have to select those people. Right. So I was used to give loans to people in uh, Chennai, Jharkhand, can, somewhere. Can we, uh, explain a bit what is P2P? Uh, what do you mean by P2P? So P2P is like, uh, let's say you need money, and I have money to invest. Now, ideally, how that happens in traditional world? I submit my money to bank, and money bank gives to you. Right. Now, if if you are not that kind of customer who has credit history, or you don't have proper record of paying loans and all, bank won't give loan to you. Absolutely. And if you ask some local lala guy, he will charge you 36% interest, 40% interest. Yes, so RBI said we can develop platforms where investors and borrowers come at same place and they can exchange money. Good. And due diligence has to be done by the investor. By the platform. By the platform. So and then further, as a lender or an investor, you can choose who whom to give the money and whom not to give. Yeah. So based on the risk category, platform will say, okay, this is A, this is B, this is C. A will pay 12%, C will pay 20%, and D will pay 24%. Absolutely. Now you can go and allocate your money diversify based on the people you select. So it all happened uh, pre-COVID. So I, I did lot of money, and for few months the good returns were coming, 18%, 19%. Right. 
and in real world 18% is too good man right. you can double your money in 4 years which is better than any asset right. suddenly covid happens now these were people who actually was needing 20000 30000 rupees to operate their day to day basis jobs mm -hmm. they lot of people lose job right how how do they pay it back now you cannot pay pay back even principal for that about 20% interest right? right now if you ask me about that portfolio even my principal will be 70% recovered forget about 20% return interest or anything so that's a kind of mistake right you need to have how much risk you can take now you do diversify then came this pooling concept what what is this pooling concept so what happens in pooling concept let's say you are a platform right you will give loan to people at 20% 24% but you will give me at 12% hmm i will get 12% return got it see now my return is getting reduced by 4% let's say average but there is a risk hedging there hmm. right somebody will be there for first loan default guarantee some rules will be there Default rate is two percent, three percent. You will also make two percent, but I will be satisfactorily happy with twelve percent, saying my money is safe now. Got it. So if you ask me, I don't do P two P directly now. I do in the pooling concept now. But isn't that also risky and unguaranteed? That is unguaranteed, but it's like how much default rate can go. Got it. If things like two thousand eight comes again, it can go default. Right. But still, there is a cushion of five six percent, right? Got it. So if you say normal default rate is one point five two percent, there is still cushion of four percent. Got it. But still, uh, just for our uh, viewers and listeners, uh, anything that we are discussing right now are not investment advices. Uh, so Rav has been investing based on his experiences, his own risk appetite. You should also make your own decision based on your risk appetite and experiences and learnings in the space. Thank you. So just to add on that, right? Uh, one myth I want to break here: Don't get impressed, intimidated by. any portfolio you see on youtube instagram anywhere <laughs> see everybody has different risk appetite everybody has different potential different investment objective and don't don't get impressed by anybody see wherever you are every everybody else in the world is in different place whatever works for you may not work for him whatever works for him may not work for you so just think on your own what you want what is your objective of investing money how much return you want based on that choose your risk assessment choose your allocation and all why don't you tell what was what was your investment objective ye to galtiyan to happened right because you had some thesis and objective that's why we are discussing but what was your objective see my first objective was to get somewhere up from the middle class level got it got it i'll i'll tell you uh, in my family i bought my first car when i was 24 25 years old nice. after that i have bought three four cars Nice. So, is little bit comfort is desired in life, not much of them, but little bit is desired. So, and then again, uh, I think the primary motive of money is to spend free on medical education, all these basic needs. Rest everything luxury is like infinite optional, right? You can spend any amount, doesn't matter. But leading a comfortable life is the is the goal. Right, right. You also, when you came here, you mentioned here uh, I can buy whatever brand T-shirt or shirt you don't buy. What, uh, what is that philosophy? See, I I like to spend on experiences. Okay, okay. If if you tell me that uh, you have to buy eight thousand rupee T-shirt, or in eight thousand you can go and see some nice waterfall, I'll go and see waterfall. Got it. That will get imprinted in my memory. I'll think about it in the peaceful times. Maybe I I learn something there. But buying expensive is not going to change my life. now there are two aspects right so for example if something is making my life better i i go and buy it let's say i have to use my mobile it has to be good because it has been dedicated to me basically if i have to invest in car it has to be safe i'm not going to risk my life by buying some car without airbags and all so whenever it comes to basic things security comfort convenience you go and buy but whenever is my personal fund again i don't want to pay 500% premium just because some tag is there this makes sense that that's that's my my fund out so now you opinion. you had this objective that you wanted to break the cycle of uh, being middle class boy and wanted to go little above and bring some comfort uh, and then you started investing and trying these things out okay uh, how how are you coming across these ideas or these investment options how were you exploring these things what was there a whatsapp group of friends uh, were you reading a lot what was your uh, research Thing. So generally, I, I I read a lot uh, in terms of uh, investing, technology, sustainability, and all. And uh, recently, I would say I have been listening to two podcasts regularly. I don't miss any single episode. 
One of them is uh, Paisa Vesa with Arpan Gupta. Yeah. Uh, they call uh, founders and people from different new fintechs and they explain how are they trying to solve problems. And I don't shy away trying those, right? Because somebody is trying to solve a problem which I might be also having, right? Yeah. I think uh, Nikhil from Drip also came on Paisa yeah. Vesa. I had him there. Yeah. Really yeah. Have had it there. We have been there uh, twice, two, two times. And so once in December 21, and I think recently, few yeah. weeks back, he came yeah. again, where he explained the journey about how Grip has evolved from 50 crore AUM to 65, 50 crore AUM. Right, and we'll surely uh, give this link in the description as well for our listeners. Yeah. Second podcast I don't miss is uh, Capital Minds with Deepak Shanoi. Okay. Yeah. I I love the concepts how he. Explain in a simple way the complex financial products, right? You ask him about tax, inflation, and all. I would actually suggest everybody listen to him. There is one episode on inflation, and I am telling you, once you listen to that, right, your myth will break. How a lot of advisors and company are trying to fool you around inflation. It is so. If you ask me, right, Deepak Shanoi is a celebrity to me. The way he explains. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Again, uh, reading books as well. Uh, Psychology of money. See, everybody thinks differently, right? Whatever work for you, whatever may not work for your children, whatever work for your father may not work for you. Now, everybody different perspective and different goal. People who are born in middle class, their first priority is to get somewhere where they can take independent financial decisions. Otherwise, if you think about people who are born in very rich class, they have that background that they can take risk and try to think how to multifold that income. As a middle class, I don't have option to multifold because I need to have that X there first. To become a 10x, right? So that journey takes a lot of time. And what are some of the interesting? What about some interesting investments that you made that are not so known to people? So I, I have invested in U.S. stocks. I have invested in startups, uh, CSOPs, SARs. Uh, maybe you need to add details to what are what are they are. Yeah, right? of course. Yeah. And uh, then I had also done in uh, some angel funding in a company. I have done as I told you uh, P2P and then pooling. I have done a lot of NCDs. Uh, I have done a lot on asset leasing, especially on the grid platform. Yeah. See, I I might be thinking someday, okay, on the road, okay, th- yeah, this blue smart cab is running very good. I hope, I wish I could have like 10 cars running, right? I cannot buy 10 cars. Right. But now I can say I have shared in those 10 cars because I have invested in blue smart through grid. Right, right. So, and obviously the traditional instruments like uh, FD, mutual funds, uh, insurance, PPF, NPS, everything. I think the, the spectrum is there, right? I still want to buy something uh, in the big AI's uh, alternative different space, but that like, ticket size is such huge for retail investor right now. Got it. I think uh, in alternative space, we are uh, we as in Grip is putting big efforts to bring down the ticket size and hope uh, we are able to bring more opportunities that are more affordable yeah. minimum transaction size. Uh, but yeah, uh, so out of this whole portfolio, right? Can you give now, now a quick overview of uh, what is what percentage is, is what in your portfolio as of today, and how often do you make changes and how often do you add add anything? Okay. So I would say, excluding real estate, uh, my current portfolio would be fifty percent fixed income. Okay. Now it could be. Anti financial advisory that at my age should not be 50% at all. But I'll tell you, I have been submitting into PF and NPS since it started, and that's like a tedious part, right? I that gets deposited from last 15 years without getting my hand right. But that's pretty really good corpus, and I believe in the theory of computation compounding. Okay, so that even that 8% will give me good returns in that. That's environment one. Right. Other than that, I would have uh, 35% in equity mutual funds. Uh, 10% in AI space and uh, 5% in uh, gold or something. Got it. If I talk about real estate, uh, I have my own uh, home in Gurgaon and uh, I can happily say that the CMI is going to finish in the next 6 months. Oh, nice. Yeah, own home yeah. in Gurgaon oh, nice. and then uh, I also have a commercial property in Gurgaon which is yielding rent from last 2 years. Nice. So, this is really interesting coming from a very yeah. humble tier to city background and now able to get four cars I counted, uh, two properties and a good good portfolio, right? And uh, what, what's your age? I am 37. 37 year old with uh, ma- happily married with one uh, uh, kid, right? Uh, how, 
now this transition of shifting to 50% fixed income did this happen recently or is it something that happened by chance see when you say balancing right i don't intentionally sell something to buy something okay now how that happens uh, based on time the preferences change okay i i may have x in equity y in fixed income but let's say from last 6 months i am getting 10 11 12% good return in fixed income so whatever new inflows i am getting i'll put in the fixed income the time i see the equity is going up i'll start putting more in equity but parallelly both things keep on happening so it's like a data fix every month i do nps every month i do pps every month i do some sip in equity whatever surplus i get i will decide based on situation but i will never withdraw ppf or pf to just invest in stocks how and bullish the market is good now uh, you mentioned about sips right this is really interesting now recently there i have also watched a lot of videos how we should make changes in the sip right uh, can you give a broad break up of how much you earn how much you set aside for expenses what what is that framework like so i would say uh, on an average i would uh, spend like 50% of my salary and i would save 50 percent other than few months where some some diwali or some vacation or something comes up i would end up saving 50% i don't plan to touch my <laughs> retirement funds as such and sometime it may go up down by 5% but not, nothing more than that got it so you kept uh, real estate from your portfolio any any specific reason for that so real estate first of all it's one is the home right so home i would say It's, it's not something you should count on excel i i want to say something here lot of financial advisor these days uh, don't recommend buying a home see it may not fit in on your finance excel it may not give you returns and all but buying a home is a emotional and psychological decision i would say uh, my personal opinion again not an advice that if you're going to spend few years in a city better buy a home there if you buy a home there it's one less thing to worry about and it give you a comfortable about to think about and focus on other things right now let's say if i have to take a risk some day let's in gurgaon i want to start take a startup where i don't get salary for one year at all i will have my own home right so i won't worry about okay i have to pay rents and also something at the back up and then you living there right that gives you a feeling as i say some comfort are necessary in life right your home gives you comfort got it wherever you roam around you will feel comfortable at your home only got it and don't don't shy away to take loans on that as well i would say okay i'll tell you so for my new car i i took a loan i could have bought in down payments but i'm sure i can make more returns than whatever bank is charging me interest right right so net i will be positive and traditionally what used to happen long time back right uh, the old generation people will say no no loans are bad because they will keep charging you a lot of interest in starting only charge pension last that's not how it works it's a simple fund right if i use your money how much amount i use how much time i use i simply pay interest right irrespective of how much to tell your you have emi you have right rb has available as loan it's, it's a simple concept then you apply time value money of that emi right for example you were paying 50000 emi 10 years back now also you are paying 50000 on emi your salary has increased 50000 may not pay that much right mm-hmm. so taking a home loan is is not a problem right? if, if you have steady flow of income got it i would add that it's only for living now if you want to buy for investment i would never advise residential property to buy only buy commercial property got to it. invest got it there are multiple reasons behind that first of all the yield the rental yield is much higher than commercial i would say 2x even more than that secondly residential property need lot of maintenance like every year tenant will change you will get it painted some termite attack will happen some some malmira will got damage and all whatever rent you earn first of all you pay income tax on that secondly 50% of that rent you pay on maintenance only then agreement is short term and all so for investments buy commercial but for living purpose you should have one home now one thing i want to highlight is see the ultimate goal of money is to spend it if you don't spend your money somebody else will spend your money right right your kids are getting it so if you are planning okay i I'll, i'll just live a miser life all life and i'll have a temporary retirement purpose doesn't make sense Right. one need to have a balance of enjoyment plus investing you invest to have a secure future see think things have changed in last two decades i would say right let's say in last generation there was set pattern you do graduation you do study you do a job 
you do the same job for 30 35 years you have a inflation adjusted salary and decrease every year and then you have a pf corpus you get retired right now things are changing first of all that job stability is not there there is an uncertainty in lot of sectors the boom keeps on coming up and down right then again uh, people want to follow their passion some people want to retire early if i ask you okay would you like to enjoy it 45 in retirement right everybody will love that right why to stay down till 60 so to accommodate all these needs you need to have dynamic mode of investing whatever works right so whatever parents were used to do okay let's let's buy land there right so your parents might have told you right yaar ye plot mein 20 lakh ka mil raha tha hai na ab ye 1 crore ka ho gaya of course ye sabke papa nahi ho raha hai matlab what they don't tell is ki if you calculate 20 lakh to 1 crore in 25 years it cagr less than fd right वहाँ पे टाइम फ्रेम मिसिंग है अमाउंट right. नहीं है तो इवन अगर बीस लाख की एफडी भी करते हैं तो एक करोड़ की हो जाती है बिल्कुल। तो देखो कि हाउ थिंग्स आर चेंजिंग बट काइंड ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स आर इन मार्केट एंड वो बहुत डिफरेंट है द प्रोडक्ट विच आर वर्किंग इन यूएस मे नॉट वर्क इन इंडिया वट एवर वर्क फॉर ओल्डर जनरेशन विल नॉट वर्क है सेकेंड थिंग आई वुड से इज इन्वेस्ट इन यूर सेल्फ ओके दिस कुड बी लाइक लाइफ एडवाइज नॉट इन एडवाइस आई हैव लॉट ऑफ पीपल रिपोर्टिंग टू मी राइट एंड आई टेल दम Go and invest in yourself. Invest in your health. Go and read books. If you have to do a course which improves your knowledge in professionalism, communication, anywhere, right? Don't shy away in spending on that. I'll give you a simple example, right? Let's say you are into technology field. There is some certification from let's say Amazon, Google of ten thousand rupees. If you do that, you can get a job easily after six months, which will give you three lakh salary. Right. That's like a thirty x growth in six months. That's right. the highest return you can get, right? Right. right. You should have. first of all ability to make money right how that comes improve your hard skills invest in yourself once you have some money then you should work on how to make money out of that money right if you keep making money you cannot retire your money needs to keep make money right right so basically you're saying that people are always in this type of finding the next big investment idea but you're also saying figure out yourself how can you increase your Amount that you can invest. How to increase your potential? potential. Invest in yourself. Got it. Got it. Maybe uh, this is one question that we ask every uh, guest of ours. Uh, if you were to start from scratch today, right? Uh, how would you go about building your portfolio? I would say I will still have the same portfolio which I have, without deviation, but obviously without the mistakes I did. I lost lot of money in different tryouts, right? Now I have the knowledge. I I will definitely do the same way. So how would you avoid mistakes now? Because see, uh, I would say in the next last fifteen years, my my knowledge has increased multifold in terms of how to assess a products. Now let's say if you are into bank, right? You come and try to sell me any product. I'm sure I'll ask you thousand question, which even you won't know. Right. So that that's the difference is there, right? Earlier somebody will say, hey, this plan is very good. Its market link it will give you fourteen percent return every year. Good. Now I don't buy that. I believe every everything which is giving you more than twelve percent return is good enough. Good. Don't go and complicate things. Okay. Don't mix investment and insurance. As everybody says, right? Good. Don't buy complicated products. Okay. If this is if you exit here, we'll get this one. If this goes up, this goes down. Why, why do you need that? You decide what you need to do at granular level. Good. And when you started investing in Grip, right? Uh, but what are your views on investment on Grip and options on Grip? So. Uh, as i said right uh, i i would love to have a income revenue where i am investing in other businesses right now you don't get opportunity to invest in normal businesses earlier this kind of investing was only for organizational or institutional investors right now grip has enabled retail investor to come and invest in certain investments with a small ticket size right i can do that plus it has been a good so i am doing it from last two plus years now getting good returns And they are building. I mean, Grip is building new new products every day, especially the startup equity and cities and all, right? They they give a good revenue of this. So it's very important to have passive income streams. And when you diversify into all these kind of investment, then only you get these passive income streams. Got it. So uh, at Grip, we recently brought this tagline for us, uh, which is called "Go Beyond." So go beyond inflation, go beyond volatility, go beyond low returns. So, what's your go beyond mantra or your mo- or moment in terms of investment? I would say go beyond the traditional means. Learn, educate yourself, then invest, 
and then then see how how things works. Can you tell us one one biggest myth that people think about investments? One again, I would say that uh, people when they say they still talk in absolute numbers. Uh, they will say, "Yar, sona pachas zar da, sona asi zar ho gaya." But nobody says that it has been like ten years. Good. So learn how how the basic calculation works, right? So don't go with absolute numbers. But you should simply say, okay, the formula of seventy two. If right. something doubles in seventy two months, you get the interest rate simple. How much you're getting? Right. So do do some basic calculation. Ki how much time frame it's taking to double the amount? Good. Can you explain the seventy two formula thing and so that our so formula of seventy two is basically in the how many years an interest rate you can make your money double. For example, if my interest rate is eight percent, so I will double my money is seventy two by eight nine nine years. Got it. If I have ten percent, I do in seven point two years. Got it. One more thing I do right. See people in FD and all right. When you are doing FD and you getting interest, you basically are not growing your money. Right. Okay. So there are some instruments which give you returns, but the net intrinsic value of money is actually decreasing day by day. By right. the time value money concept. Right. Now you do you invest hundred percent hundred rupees in FD, you get six percent return every month. You spend that, and you get the hundred rupees back after ten years. Hmm. Now that hundred is worth eighty rupees only. Right. You actually reduce the value of money, right? So now if you actually have to invest, you need to think how to grow that six percent as well. Right. So this thing may only work out for retired people where you have some corpus you need monthly expenses. Otherwise, don't say okay, I'll invest in FD and then get the basic returns there. No, interesting. Cool. Uh, now this is about time we bring you to this section which is called rapid fire question round, and we have prepared some questions for you where you can just answer whatever comes to your mind. Feel free, uh, okay, and answer very quickly. So best top trading app according to you? Kite by Jinuda. Financial advisors or DIY method? I would say DIY. Or for newbies, maybe advisors, but not your uncle, not your father, <laughs> not anybody. Only fee, only advisors. Got it. That that hurt, but okay. That, that's the right <laughs> advice. Uh, short term or long term? Long term. Got it. But I'll add on the last one, right? I think there can be advisors in your life, but I think you have to be smart at the end of the day to decide what is good for you, bad for you. Don't, of course. Don't ever fall for the FOMO that uh, advisors bring to your life. Since my father is a insurance agent, so it all these all these things uh, are not applicable for him. See, there is some. In case my father sees this, see, there is some stigma in the market, right? How people uh, have invested money in insurance and all. High risk, high return, or low risk, low return. It has to be balanced. I said I'm asset allocation guy, so it has to be mix. I would put 10% in high risk, which has the potential of becoming 1% or 100%. Favorite finance influencer. I think you answered it already. Okay. If you <laughs> count podcast, I would say Deepak Chandra. Right. Stocks or derivatives. Stocks. Fixed deposits or alternative investments. Alternative investments. What is the best alternative investment platform? Grip, of course. <laughs> That technical analysis or fundamental analysis. Fundamental. Physical real estate or gold. Both no. Both no. But you 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 yourself invested in. I I I did that. But uh, one thing you realize, right? Uh, having physical real estate is a lot of headache to maintain. Inheritance and all. As I said, I buy buy online things. Now you have things like commercial real estate and all, right? Yeah. You can sign bond online. You can get the returns and all. Fifteen hundred and all. I think that that's better than buying physical as well. Gold. And in in terms of gold, I tell you, when I buy jewelry, I don't count as asset. I'll buy sovereign gold bonds for asset. asset. Gold investing. Gold. Active investing or passive investing? That's a tricky one. Yeah. But you are an active investor. Uh, that's what I feel. See, I am an active investor in uh, diversification. But when it comes to uh, mutual fund, equity, and all, I would say passive. Let, let it be for some time. So basically, you actively think about investing, but after deciding or allocating funds, you are no, you don't want to spend depends, much time. Depends on asset class. Depends on asset class. Makes sense. I I won't go and look my portfolio daily basis. Yeah, today one club will go and change. Yeah, what will change? Change? No, no, no. Buying a house or renting a house. My house. Uh, Indian stocks or US stocks? Indian stocks. 
Traditionally, US stock has given better returns, but I I believe uh, India is the futuristic country. Uh, you may get one two percent less returns, but growth potential is more there. Good. I think that's it from our side today, and uh, thanks for being a great uh, guest today, Sourav. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So with that, we have come to the end of our show. I hope you all enjoyed the conversation with Mr. Sourav. and it was really entertaining and learning for me to learn from his experiences his investment journey i hope you found it interesting as well please share your uh, thoughts in the comments and if you have any questions also please feel free to write them in the comment box don't forget to uh, like share subscribe and so that you can catch on our latest episodes of the inquisitive investors and get a grip on your money and go beyond thank you very much